Party Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 7th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. If you would like to follow along, if you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Cornegie. Here. Dharma Diaz. Ruben Diaz, Dinowitz, Here. Drum, Here. Eugene, Present. Felice, Gennaro, Here. Gibson, Present. Jonai, Grudenchik, Holden, Here. Kalos, Here. Koo, Present. Kozlowitz, Here. Lander, Here. Levin, Here. Levine, Here. Lewis, Here. Mizell, Here. Menchaca, Present. Miller, Present. Moya, Perkins, Powers, Here. Reynoso, Here. Riley, Rivera, Present. Rodriguez, Rose, Here. Rosenthal, Here. Salamanca, Present. Traeger, Here. Ulrich, Valone, Van Bramer, Here. Felice, Here. Jaeger, Matteo, Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Here. Matteo. Here. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Father Michael Callahan, pastor and spiritual leader at the Brooklyn Oratory Parishes and New York Disaster Interfaith Services, located at 64 Mig... Middle Street in Brooklyn, New York. All rise. As we gather today, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be here. I am also a board member of NIDIS, and I serve as the president of the Emergency Shelter Network, which is a network of respite care sites hosted by communities of faith working across sectarian identities to care for homeless and vulnerable women and men across our five boroughs. As you gather today, I pray on behalf of our members and the guests that we serve to encourage the work of this city council. Let us pray. O oh God, who is beyond our naming, yet not beyond our lives, we gather here today to seek blessing and grace for members of this city council who serve the varied and diverse communities of our city. We thank you for their service, dedication, and the many hours they give to their districts and the greater interests of New York City. Having fashioned us, each in your own likeness, you invite us to be collaborators with you in the care and stewardship of daily life. God, you know how complicated life can be and how many are the needs, the ideas, the hopes, and yes, the fears of our neighbors. We ask today that you give the members of this council and all who work with them eyes to see the needs of the communities they represent, as well as the needs of communities different from their own. Open their ears and hearts to listen to voices 
both resonant and dissonant as they grapple with the issues of governance, enlighten their minds with understanding, compassion, and creativity, and provide them the conviction to act for the benefit of all people in our city. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was a very beautiful prayer, and we appreciate Father Michael Callahan being here with us today, and we thank you for all of your service, where most of it happens outside of your congregation and outside of the church walls, and so we certainly thank you for the work that you do. And we will now have Council Member Steve Levin to spread the invocation onto the record. Madam Majority Leader, I'd like to make a motion to spread the invocation as a whole upon the record. Motion accepted. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, Father Michael Callahan is a priest in, of the Brooklyn Oratory of St. Philip, Philip Neri. He has served in ordained ministry for nearly 33 years. He's a graduate of Loyola, Loyola University in Maryland with a BA as a double major in political science and philosophy, pre-law program track. He continued his education in graduate studies at Marquette University in philosophy. After several years in the business sector, Father Michael pursued seminary studies at Catholic University and St. Mary's Seminary and University, completing his STB and Master's of Divinity degrees. He also holds a Master of Nonprofit Administration from the Mendoza College of Business at the University of Notre Dame. Father Michael has served in a variety of ministries over the years, including parishes, ministry with the deaf, hospice, chaplaincy, housing, education, and food security. He served as executive director of Nazareth Housing for over a decade and has been an advocate for affordable housing for many years. He served for five years on the board of directors for Homeless Services United, four of those as president, and that's the capacity where I met him. A founding member of LES Ready in the Lower East Side, he has worked to help communities build resiliency after the impacts of Hurricane Sandy supporting outreach, prevention, and impact of domestic violence and intimate partner violence issues in the Bronx. He helped found and co-chair the Bronx Domestic Violence Roundtable. He is currently the managing director of Project Haiti, supporting education and development in the Artibonite Department of Haiti and is an almoner for the Havens Relief Society here in New York City. Father Callahan is also a member of the Board of Directors of New York Disaster Interfaith Services and is the President of the Board of Directors for the Emergency Shelter Network. In his present ministry, he serves as pastor at Assumption Parish in Brooklyn Heights, where his parish hosts a respite bed site for homeless New Yorkers. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Steve Levin, and we thank you so much for being here today with us, and we look forward to seeing much of your work as it progresses in our communities. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And we will, now have, uh, we will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Mark Traeger. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of September 9th, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. We'll now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M339 through M341. A uh, couple done a call-up vote. At this time, I'm going to ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Again, colleagues, we're just voting on the land use call-ups. Adams. Aye. Council Member Adams votes aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel votes aye on all. Ayala. Aye. Council Member Ayala votes aye on all. Barron. Councilmember Barron votes aye on all. Borelli. Brannon. Aye on all. Brannon votes aye on all. Brooks Powers. Aye on all. Brooks Powers votes aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Councilmember Cabrera votes aye. Councilmember Chin. Carnegie. Councilmember Carnegie votes aye. Dharma Diaz. Aye. Dharma Diaz votes aye. Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz votes C. Dinowitz. 
Councilmember Dinowitz votes aye. Drum. Yes. Councilmember Drum votes yes. Eugene. Aye. Councilmember Eugene votes aye. Felice. Aye. Councilmember Felice votes aye on all. Gennaro. Yes. Councilmember Gennaro votes yes. Councilmember Gibson. Gibson votes aye. Jonai. Aye. Councilmember Jonai votes aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Councilmember Gordenchik votes aye. Holden. Aye. Councilmember Holden votes aye on all. Kalos. Aye. Councilmember Kalos votes aye. Councilmember Ku. Aye on all. Councilmember Ku votes aye on all. Kozlowitz. Aye. Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye. Lander. Aye. Councilmember Lander votes aye. Levin. Levine. Aye. Council Member Levine votes aye. Lewis. Aye. Council Member Lewis votes aye. Mizell. Yes. Council Member Mizell votes yes. Menchaca. Aye. Council Member Menchaca votes aye. Miller. Aye. Council Member Miller votes aye. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Councilmember Powers votes aye. Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso votes aye. Riley. Majority Leader, can I ask for unanimous consent to permission to vote on all land use call ups and items on the general order calendar, please? Any objections? Seeing none, your request is granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Councilmember Rivera votes aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Councilmember Rose votes aye. Rosenthal. Uh, Councilmember Rosenthal votes aye on all. Salamanca. Councilmember Salamanca votes aye on all. Traeger. Councilmember Traeger votes aye. Ulrich. Valone. Councilmember Vallone votes aye on all. Van Bramer. Madam Majority Leader, I would like to make a motion for unanimous consent to vote on all items coupled on the general order's calendar. Any objections? Seeing none? I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. Councilmember Jaeger votes aye. Matteo. Councilmember Matteo votes aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups have a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero negative, and we will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to today's state of meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Happy Thursday. I would like to remind all members that masks are required to be worn throughout the stated meeting even while you are speaking. Today we're voting on eight bills to help our city tackle its many challenges, including our climate crisis. We didn't need Hurricane Ida to remind us that our city is not prepared for climate change. Storm after storm has devastated our city and proven that our infrastructure is no match for extreme weather. The damage is only going to get worse, which is why our city needs to more aggressively plan for climate adaptation. That's why I'm so proud that we are today voting on a bill to create a citywide climate resiliency plan and another that requires all electric zero emissions school buses. We're also voting to provide better pay and training to shelter security guards and to work with developers to make our train system more accessible to all. No one should ever doubt that this council's commitment to strengthening our city each stated is a testament to that commitment, and I'm proud of our record of doing the most good for the people who need it the most. October 11th is National Coming Out Day, where we celebrate the power of living in your truth, and we raise awareness for the LGBTQ plus community. On this day, no matter how you identify, be proud of who you are and support LGBTQ plus equality. I came out in April of 1999 when I was 16 years old. Uh, as I do uh, in every stated, I want to acknowledge uh, the few 9-11 related deaths. Today we mourn the death of retired firefighter Michael Toll, who died on September 29th. 
I also want to acknowledge those New Yorkers who have died on the job. Deliverista Babacardia, 44 years old, died on September 25th after being struck by a car as he was riding his e-bike in East New York in Brooklyn. Last Friday, we reached another grim milestone in our battle against COVID-19. The death toll of this pandemic in the United States has surpassed 700,000 people. We have lost 34,334 New Yorkers from COVID-19 as of October 5th. We are still suffering, but we are resilient and we will recover. Let us pause for a moment of silence for those New Yorkers who have died from COVID-19, from 9-11 related illnesses, and who have died on the job. We are sending our deepest condolences to their family and friends. If people would rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Before we get into our agenda, I want to say we are really uh, lucky to be graced today by our former colleague, Councilmember Costa Constantinides, who we're so happy to have him here. This has been a, a difficult year and a half for uh, many New Yorkers, uh, many people who work at the City Council, and even many council members. And uh, we know that uh, Costa has experienced some deep loss over this past year, but we love him and we love his son, Nico, and we're so happy to see him looking healthy, and uh, we're so glad he's here today. Uh, he is, he was, and always will be an environmental champion, and many of the bills today he was deeply, intimately involved with. Some of the bills were his bills before he left the city council. And so we're really, really glad that he's here today. Now on to our agenda for today. <clears throat> from the Finance Committee, we'll be voting on a transparency resolution. From our land use committee, we'll be voting on an item that is particularly important to me. It was a great example of government working together to make our city more accessible for all. We're gonna be voting on the plan Elevate Transit, Zoning for Accessibility, which will update and strengthen the zoning tools to pr for private developers to work with the MTA to build ADA accessible transit station entrances as part of new development. The proposal builds on the recommendations of the 2019 City Council report that called on the MTA and city planning to update these tools to help accelerate the construction of system-wide accessibility. We're also voting on the Windermere, a special permit to facilitate the restoration, conversion, and enlargement of an existing vacant building with ground floor retail, office space, and 20 units of affordable housing at 400-406 West 57th Street in my district. We will be modifying this application to eliminate a hotel option. This is a building that has been derelict for almost 20 years, an eyesore and Hell's Kitchen, so I'm very, very glad we're doing this today. Uh, 2840 Knapp Street rezoning will facilitate the interior renovations, which will result in increased floor area for an existing six-story nursing home in Council District 48. 307 Kent Avenue will facilitate the redevelopment of the current warehouse building into a new nine-story building with commercial and community space in Councilmember Steve Levin's district. 106-02 Rockaway Beach Boulevard rezoning, which will facilitate the construction of a six-story self-storage facility in Council Member Eric Ulrich's district. And finally, we'll be voting on the withdrawal of 629-639 uh, West 142nd Street rezoning from our calendar in Council Member Mark Levine's district. Moving on to our legislative agenda, our first bill comes out of the Public Housing Committee and is sponsored by Council Member Fernando Cabrera. Introduction number 2330A will require 3 on one customer service center to allow the public to contact the center to file complaints or service requests relating to NYCHA in the same manner as such complaints or service requests are routinely accepted by 3 on one Those complaints or service requests would, would be referred to NYCHA. The bill would also require data on such complaints or service requests to be made public, and I want to thank from the staff, Audrey Son. 
We're voting on two bills from our contracts committee, which will provide better pay and training for security and fire guards. Uh, introduction number 1995A, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, will provide more training for security guards who work at shelters. This bill will require shelter operators that contract with DHS to ensure that all security guards and fire guards receive 40 hours of training in addition to the minimum training required under the state's general business law within 120 days of being hired. From the staff, I want to thank Louis Children Brown, Alex Polinoff, Leah Skripiak, and Aminta Kilowan. Additionally, introduction number uh, 2006A, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, will require security guards at contracted shelters be paid prevailing wages. Security guards at nonprofit run shelters typically earn just over the minimum wage, while those employed directly by the city earn $18.45 an hour, which can amount to $7,000 to $8,000 more per year. Security guards at nonprofit run sites are also not provided with the same benefits affor afforded to those employed directly by the city and often cannot afford medical insurance or other benefits. This bill requires city shelter operators that contract with DHS to ensure all security and fire guards are paid no less than the prevailing wage and require shelter operators to submit annual certifications to the DHS commissioner and controller that all guards are paid a prevailing wage, including records of the days and hours worked and wages and benefits paid to each such guard. And from the staff, again, I want to thank Louis Children Brown, Alex Polinoff, Leah Skripiak, and Michelle Lee. Next up, we have a bill from our Committee on Housing and Building, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Cornegie. Proposed introduction number 2261A will complete the most recent code revision cycle by updating the New York City building, fuel, gas, and mechanical codes with further updates to the plumbing code. The revisions are based on the 2015 editions of the International Building, Fuel, Gas, Mechanical, and Plumbing Codes published by the International Code Council as required by Local Law 33 of 2007. That local law requires that New York City Department of Buildings keep the New York City construction codes up to date with the ICC. The proposed legislation improves building construction standards for new buildings and resolves issues relating to the application of some provisions of the new codes to the alteration of existing buildings. This bill also includes amendments that promote sustainability and resiliency, enhance affordable housing, and strengthen tenant protection. And from the staff, I want to thank Janan Zilka, with support from Audrey San, Jose Conde, Charles Kim, and a team from the Bill Drafting Division. The next two bills come from the report that I released in 2019, which was entitled Growing Food Equity, which outlined several proposals to tackle the issue. Introduction 1663A is sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, and it is out of our Envi Economic Development Committee. It will first establish an Office of Urban Agriculture within the Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability. Second, it will empower the Office of Urban Agriculture to conduct public education and outreach to promote urban agriculture, receive comments pertaining to urban agriculture, make recommendations to the Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability and other agencies to protect and expand urban agriculture, and establish a program to support research for advancing urban agriculture legislation and policy in coordination with the Office of Food Policy, the Parks Department, the Department of City Planning, and other relevant agencies. It will establish a 13-member urban, urban, urban Agriculture Advisory Board to advise the Director of the Office of Urban Agriculture, the Mayor, and the Council on issues relating to urban agriculture, and require the Urban Agriculture Advisory Board to submit recommendations to the Office of Urban Agriculture Director, Mayor, and Council Speaker within 18 months of the effective date of this law. Next, we have, uh, <clears throat> we have introduction number 1058A, sponsored by Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel and from the Committee on Land Use, which will require the Office of Urban Agriculture to produce an urban agriculture report every five years. And from the staff, I want to thank Nadia Johnson, Alex Polinoff, and Nell Beekman. Next up is introduction number 455A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum and out of the Committee on Environmental Protection. Designed to reduce gas emissions, this bill will require that all school buses in use by September 1st, 2035 are all electric, zero emission school buses. The replacement of school buses shall be subject to the commercial availability 
and reliability of all electric zero emission school buses, and the technical and physical availability of related planning, planned infrastructure, including but not limited to charging stations and bus depots for electric zero emission school buses. The legislation will also require the Department of Education to report to the mayor and the speaker on a variety of implementation targets within three, with three reporting deadlines, July 1st, 2023, July 1st, 2028, and July 1st, 2033. From the staff, I want to thank Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, Ricky Chawla, and Brad Reed. And the last bill we are voting on today is about protecting our coastline, that is about environmental justice. We are in a cr climate crisis and extreme weather, such as inland and coastal flooding, heat waves and severe storms are, as everyone knows, becoming more and more frequent. We need a plan to safeguard and defend our shoreline from Rockaway to Riverdale, from Lower Manhattan to South Brooklyn to Staten Island. And uh, introduction number 1620A, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannon, the chair of the Committee on Resiliency and Waterfronts, will require that no later than September 30th, 2022, so less than a year from now, and every 10 years thereafter, the Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability, or another officer agency designated by OLTPS in consultation with other city agencies, develop and post on its website a climate adaptation plan that considers and evaluates various climate hazards impacting the city and its shoreline. The climate adaptation plan would include recommendations for resiliency and adaptation measures to protect residents, property, and infrastructure in the city. Such plan would identify areas that are highly vulnerable to climate hazards to help determine where resiliency and adaptation measures should be first implemented. Such plan would also consider the potential impacts of adaptation measures on environmental justice areas. And from the staff, I want to thank Jessica Steinberg Albin. I know that Chair Brandon has been working on this bill for a very long time, and I want to congratulate him. Uh, with that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will begin with Council Members Cabrera. Gennaro and Kalos. You want us to come back to you? You'd like to give your time to Council Member Gennaro. Okay, Council Member Gennaro, would you like to speak at this time? Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, uh, uh, just want to speak just very brief about some of the great bills that are being done today. I'd like to thank in a very special way Danny Drum, uh, who has uh, worked long and hard for you know, many years on this bill to make, to uh, uh, you know, bring us to this good day. Uh, we've had school bus bills in the past that uh, were passed and didn't go anywhere. In 2005, there was a bill passed that was supposed to transition uh, the city from diesel to alternative fuels and uh, not one school bus ever got converted uh, <clears throat> but because of the work of Danny and the staff um, you know we have the benchmarks that the that the speaker spoke about this is a very very solid bill and will lead to full um, implementation I uh, uh, predict also there is the ability to retrofit existing buses for half the cost of what it would be to purchase a new one you know, Danny, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk more about that, but I'm, I'm very happy about that. And uh, uh, Justin Brannon with his bill that was started by Costa, and uh, the ball was given to uh, 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 Justin, who did a great job in, uh, you know, really doing what needs to be done in terms of a, a very, you know, rigorous and, 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 and uh, uh, um, reporting process by which we will have, you know, the best climate adaptation strategies employed in New York City. Uh, with regard to the building code bill, uh, may have, some folks may have heard that the uh, you know, new building code bill would um, uh, interfere with local law 97 compliance because of insulation and whatnot. Uh, 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 Jeff Baker and I went round and round on that and uh, I am certainly not worried that that is going to be the case. So I'm very comfortable with it and I don't think it will have an adverse impact on local law 97 compliance and will help fire safety. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to pay tribute in a special way to Costa, who's here, who is 
part of my team, part of my office for many, many years. Uh, I love him very much. Our, 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 our lives have been tracking similar, we've, we've, you know, in, in happiness and sadness. Uh, you know, we've always been together and we always will be. It's a really, it was really great to see him here today and to you know, get him to, uh, you know, like the full appreciation of his really rich environmental legacy. But that's not why we love Costa. We love Costa because he's Costa. So thank you all very much and great to see Costa here and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gennaro. We'll now go to Council Member Kalos. Council Member Gennaro, I love Costa because he is an environmental hero. Uh, Councilmember Ben Kalos, this pandemic has shown us how fragile our food network is. Whether it was food shortages, toilet paper, paper towels, or groceries whose prices still haven't gone down, New York City must have a sustainable food supply. More and more we are seeing the future of agriculture is urban. That's why today we're establishing an office of urban agriculture to work with existing commercial urban farms, expanding them to remove barriers to entry across agencies through the lens of social and economic justice. The office will work with NYCHA's building health communities to build farms on public housing land to offer our lowest income New Yorkers access to healthy food and economic opportunity. Supporting our vast network of community gardens, not to mention expanding Grow to Learn from our current 725 schools throughout the city. In my own district, we've worked with Grow NYC to bring planters and urban agriculture to every school in the neighborhood. All of this comes after years of work, starting with Speaker Corey Johnson, who proposed the advisory board that will also be implemented by this legislation. There will be representation from organizations focusing on climate, restorative, and social justice, with representation from youth whose voices have been leading this fight. Councilmember Raphael Espinal and Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams invested $2 million in partnership with EDC to build out urban agriculture in Brooklyn and originally introduced this legislation to bring it citywide. I went to public high school in the Bronx on the same block as DeWitt Clinton, which now boasts a student-built 1,300-square-foot hydroponic farm. Through Teens for Food Justice, I met students who have harvested 25,000 pounds of produce, uh, much of it going to their school lunch, 30 to 60 pounds donated to local food pantries, and some still left over to sell at farmers markets. This isn't the only program, and we need more. Introduction 1663 will create the Office of Urban Agriculture and its advisory board to get that done. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson, Raphael Espinal, Borough President Adams, and the Economic Development Committee staff, including Council Alex Polinoff. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. Council Member Cabrera, do you wish to speak at this time? Okay, thank you very much. We'll now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Contracts, intros 1995A and 2006A, Shelter Security Guards. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Economic Development, intro 1663A, Office of Urban Agriculture. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intro 455A, Electric School Buses. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1752, Transparency Resolution. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 2261A, Changes to Construction Codes. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Intro 1058A, Urban Agriculture Report. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 832 and Reso 1753 and LU 833 and Reso 1754, 2840 Knapp Street Rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 834, the Windermere. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me. LU 836 and Reso 1755 and LU 837 and Reso 1756, 629, 633 West 142nd Street rezoning. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 838, Elevate Transit. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 839 and Reso 1757 through LU 841 and Reso 1759 zoning amendments. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Housing, Intro 2330A, NYCHA Service Request. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Res Resiliency and Waterfronts, Intro 1620A, 
Climate Adaptation Plan. Amended and coupled on general orders. General orders calendar LU 834 and Reso 1760, the Windermere and LU 838 and Reso 1761 elevate transit. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time I ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Adams. Permission granted. Just wanted to give a uh, particular thanks to uh, Councilmember Alika Amphrey Samuel for the agriculture uh, bill today and special recognition once again to our colleague, the climate guru of the New York City Council, um, Councilmember Costa Constantinides. We truly miss you in this body, but we sure do appreciate the legacy that you are leaving. I do uh, vote aye on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Permission granted. First, I just want to thank everybody for the support of intro 1058A in relation to the urban agricultural report itself. And I just wanted to say a special thank you to our speaker because this bill was near and dear to my heart. Everyone knows that in my district, we struggle with access to healthy food. And this particular bill will allow for us to actually have a report that we will be able to use in order to receive and gain more resources for our gardens, for our organizations that support access to healthy fruits and vegetables. And so this means a lot, and this is a start to making sure that we put communities that are lowest served at the forefront. So thank you so much for everything and everybody. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye. Councilmember Ayala votes aye. Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Barron votes aye. Brennan. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, Costa, I don't like how relaxed and happy you look now that you left, but uh, it's good to see you back. Um, uh, thank you to all the advocates uh, who worked so hard uh, to get the five borough resiliency plan done, um, and everyone that worked hard on the A version of this bill over the past couple of weeks, uh, especially uh, Chief of Staff Jason Goldman and um, Speaker Corey Johnson for really prioritizing a bill that had been sitting around for quite a while that should have been done a long time ago. Uh, but making sure that the 15 lives that we lost uh, during Hurricane Ida uh, were, were not uh, in vain or for granted. In their honor and their memory, uh, we passed this five borough resiliency plan, and it's just a start, but something that should have been done a long time ago, but it's a start um, and, and uh, something that will finally take into account holistically the entire city of New York and the impacts and the vulnerabilities to climate change with an eye on uh, environmental justice communities um, and prioritizing the areas that need it most. So congratulations, Costa, uh, and uh, Chair Gennaro uh, as well. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Permission granted. So I wanted to um, take a moment to congratulate and recognize the hard work of my colleagues, in particular um, Council Member Alika Amphrey Samuels on um, this much needed report. Similarly, Southeast Queens um, is a food desert and we need to continue to find ways to address uh, this pressing need. Also, would love to recognize uh, former council member Costa for the groundwork that was laid for this much needed um, legislation around resiliency and waterfronts um, with intro 1620A and for council member Brannon and Chair Gennaro for quarterbacking and making this a reality, recognizing the need to look holistically um, in the outer boroughs in addition to Manhattan when we talk about resiliency and coming from a coastal district 
in Southeast Queens and the Rockaways. I'm so honored to be a co-sponsor on that legislation. And lastly, I wanted to recognize Councilmember Moya um, and setting the bar with our shelter workers as well in legislation. And so with that being said, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cabrera. Yes. Thank you so much. I just wanted to take a moment uh, to thank every single one of you in support of my bill, 2338, the 311 NAGSHA bill that would finally track complaints and requests uh, for services received. It's time to hold NAGSHA accountable. I want to thank the speaker. I want to especially thank uh, Jason Golden uh, for all your support and Chair Amphrey Samuel and council staff Audrey Saab, and, and the administration, Paul Ochoa. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I vote aye. Carnegie. Permission granted. Councilmember Carnegie. Councilmember Carnegie. Yes. Can you uh, look I this way? Um, I, thank you, Madam. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Yeah. Um, I just want to say uh, congratulations to all my colleagues who are passing substantive legislation today. Uh, it's good to know that we, although we are coming to the end of our legislative session, we have members still working diligently on behalf of. All of our members, I wanted to say uh, thank you to my friend, Costa. It is great to see you. Um, you are incredibly missed. Back in the days on the back row, we had a, uh, a very good uh, coll collegial environment. Um, COVID has robbed us of that, but you remind me of what we used to, what we used to be able to do back on the back row. I want to say a special thank you <laughs> to Alika Amprey Samuels for her bill today. And um, I'm looking forward to making sure that that bill includes a lot of the um, nonprofits who are on the ground with, with gardens who are ready to provide substantive food and help us fight food insecurity. So uh, thank you. Love you. Thank Pastor. you. Dharma Diaz. Let's remember, Dharma Diaz votes aye. Ruben Diaz. Thank you, Council Member Diaz. Dinowitz. Permission granted. This one? Okay, thank you. I just, I just want to take a moment to express my gratitude towards uh, Council Member Brandon uh, and Council Member Constantinis. We never got to serve together, um, but and I feel like I'm missing out on a lot. And I just want to thank you because our city was so hard hit by Ida. We're going to keep getting hit by storms. Uh, buildings in my district were flooded. The Major Deegan looked like the Bronx River Parkway. And what's so important about this bill is it doesn't just, the, the, the climate resiliency bill, it's not just about lower Manhattan flooding. We're an entire city. And I so value that, that commitment to climate resiliency is throughout the entire city, especially districts like mine, uh, that were hard hit and the people in my district that were hard hit. So thank you, thank you, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Cornegie, just to uh, verify. Council Member Cornegie votes aye. Thank you, sir. Drum. Can I explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I want to just say uh, thank you to our speaker for advancing the legislation on the electric school buses. Uh, this is a big deal for me. You know, uh, I was a New York City public school teacher for 25 years before I got elected to the council, and I sat on those school buses that spewed that fumes. I always, when I took a school trip, had to bring a barf bag with me because inevitably one student would throw up on the bus because of the fumes. Uh, so this is a, a big deal for New York City and for the students. I, um, as I said, want to thank the speaker for moving this forward. I want to thank uh, council member and chair Gennaro as well um, for moving it forward. I also want to thank um, 
former council member Acosta Constantinidis because he originally heard this bill in 2017. And so today is a great day for New York City and for those school children. And I just urge my colleagues to vote yes on this, as do I. I vote yes on all matters today. Thank you. Thank you. Eugene. Councilmember Eugene votes aye. Felice. Councilmember Felice votes aye. Gennaro. Councilmember Gennaro votes yes. Gibson. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to echo the sentiments of all of my colleagues in congratulating uh, those colleagues that have important legislation on today's agenda. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Ayala and Councilmember Moya for recognizing that we have to provide uh, more opportunities for our security guard and fire guard workers that work in our New York City shelters taking care of vulnerable families. These bills are going to raise the wage standards and provide more health care as well as necessary training. And I also want to recognize my sister, Councilmember Amphrey Samuel, for her legislation dedicated to creating the Office of Urban Agriculture and the Advisory Board, because many of us represent those food deserts. And during COVID, we were reminded of the inequity of so many families that go to bed hungry every night. So access and opportunity and green space and community gardens and green thumbs and farmers and green markets is exactly what all communities need, no matter where they are. I want to recognize Chair Brannon, as well as our good friend Const Constantinides on their incredible work addressing climate change with this citywide resiliency plan, because as Eric Dinowitz has said, the Bronx was hit extremely hard, and you saw literally cars swimming in water, and it was very dangerous, and so we have to have short and long-term plans. And I want to thank everyone again for all of the great legislation. Uh, today is a good day, and I feel like these bills just bring us one step closer to creating that equitable city that everyone rightfully deserves that lives in our city. So I am proud to vote aye on all, and want to send my congratulations to all of my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Nye. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Permission Leader? granted. I just want to thank all those that did not explain their vote today, and with that, I vote aye. <laughs> Gordonchik. Brief permission to explain my vote. Do I get thank you for a <laughs> short explanation? I just want to congratulate the sponsors of the food-related legislation today. Uh, as I said it during the vote, I represent um, a district that has the oldest working farm in the state of New York. New York City spreads out over almost 200,000 acres, and while much of that is built upon, much of it isn't. And there's no reason that we can't be doing more locally um, if for no other reason than to teach our young people where food comes from and to appreciate it and to make sure that they respect it and that nobody goes hungry. Um, the mission of this council, and I want to thank the speaker for this, um, has been to make sure that no New Yorker goes hungry. Um, it's something that I've worked on in my time here, and I hope that the people that succeed us will um, continue to work toward that goal. But the bills that we are passing today will help, and they'll educate that. And I also want to thank the council for uh, their support in building an education center at the Queens County Farm and helping to allocate $26 million to that goal, um, which will be built, God willing, in the near future. And to my friend Danny Drum, I was on those buses too, Danny but I wasn't smart enough to bring one of those bags. And Costa, it's always good to see you here. Thank you all, and with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Holden. Councilmember Holden votes aye on all. Kalos. Congratulations to Alika, Brannon, Costa, aye and all. Thank you. Ku. Councilmember Ku votes aye on all. Kozlowitz. <laughs> Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye on all. And loves Costa. <laughs> Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'll join the Costa Constantinides appreciation uh, session. It's especially good to have you and to be uh, helping you on to that great economic development corporation board where I know you're going to fight to do good at the same time that we are passing all these great environmental bills. So it's nice to have you here now. 
uh, with real congratulations to the folks that are moving forward, the resiliency and electric school bus uh, and um, food, um, food security bills. I do want to say let's keep going and pushing. There's a couple more bills that would really make a big difference on environmental issues. Alika Amprey Samuel has a dynamite all-electric NYC. Stop hooking up to gas bill. Let's move that to the floor. The speaker has a dynamite bill that would require comprehensive planning, intro 2186. Please sign on to that one. We've just got a couple of months left. This, bit, this session here is a great step forward. Um, let's keep going and do all we can before we get across the finish line. A vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Congratulate all of the sponsors of the legislation we're passing today. Uh, uh, welcome our friend Costa Constantinidis back here to the chambers um, uh, and thank him for all that he contributed to this body over the years um, and to the um, environmental health of this city. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Councilmember Levine votes aye on all. Councilmember Lewis. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Sorry I had to sit, I can't stand too long. Um, I know I'm wearing heels, but I can't stand too long. But um, I wanted to congratulate Councilmember Amprey Samuels. Our districts border one another, and I wanna say that your bill and the fruits of your labor and your leadership supports district like mine and everyone else's that's here. So I wanna say thank you so much uh, for your leadership on this. And I wanna also congratulate all other bill sponsors that are continuing the conversation on resiliency. Thank you so much and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Mizell. Yes. Councilmember Mizell votes yes. Menchaca. Permission granted. Hello, colleagues. Um, I want to say thank you to Speaker Johnson for bringing the coming out uh, celebration that we do for so many reasons. It's so important that we do that work and that we do that work here in this council. Uh, for the last few months now, almost eight weeks, we've been dealing with an issue in the district at PS 295 where a mural that was done by Groundswell, one of our CASA grants, $20,000, created this beautiful mural with a black and brown uh, pair of young girls that were carrying signs that say, your silence will not protect you, Audre Lorde inspired, quote, and the other girl holding a sign that said, what else is possible? Destroyed by three administrators, there's an investigation, we're working on it, uh, but no resolution. Things are still happening today. Anti-blackness, xenophobia, transphobia, homophobia, still happening today. So it's really beautiful to see all these flags here because I feel good. Two weeks ago, last stated, there was a member who took my flag. This is a flag that I carry in front of my desk, you see it. Uh, put it in, a, in someone else's Coke can. Uh, really confusing for me. I didn't know what to do. Was it just a joke? I know the guy, you know. Uh, I was holding that for a while and I got mad. But I said something. I spoke. I spoke up, he apologized. So I just want you to know we're, we're kind of okay now. But these things still happen and we have to speak up, we have to stand up and it's just so beautiful that we can do that here. While we've resolved what happened in the council state of floor with between two colleagues, we still haven't resolved the DOE thing. So this is for everyone that's at home listening, watching us here with pride, allies. Let's keep doing this work, but let's speak up. And this is an Arabic translation but um, in any voice, in any language, your, your silence will not protect you. Speak up. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Okay, thank you. Moya. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, today, I am once again proud to be part of a body that fights for working class New Yorkers. 
that fights for the very communities we see disproportionately impacted time and time again. Uh, my bill intro 2006 uh, as part of the Safety in Our Shelters Act to establish prevailing wage for shelter security guards and fire guards is another step forward to correct the inequities that have ravaged our black and brown communities. As we continue to fight for our recovery, we need to continue to fight for every New Yorker that stood up for those that needed it the most. New York City cannot be the capital of the world if our own don't have an economic capital, if our own are struggling to put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads. Prevailing wages for these workers is one way we can move towards creating an equitable standard of life that everyone deserves and should have, no matter where you come from or where you live or where you work. And I want to applaud uh, the members of 32BJ for their tireless dedication and partnership uh, in our fight to build a fairer and more equitable city. Uh, but in particular, I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his, for his great work. Uh, my sister councilwoman, uh, Diana Ayala, uh, of course, uh, Jason Goldman, the staff, and uh, my chief of staff, Megan Taddeo, and all my colleagues uh, for supporting and voting to pass intro 2006. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify for the record, Councilmember Miller voted votes yes. Uh, Powers. Councilmember Powers votes aye. Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso votes aye on all. Rivera. Permission granted. You brought the mic over, sorry. So I must, um, I must disclose for the council record that the NYPD is being funded in today's transparency resolution and my mother is an NYPD civilian employee. With that, I wanna say congratulations to all of my colleagues and it is so good to see you, Costa. Thanks everyone, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Rodriguez votes aye. Councilmember Rose. Aye. Councilmember Rose votes aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Councilmember Rosenthal votes aye on all. Salamanca. Aye on Councilmember Salamanca votes aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Councilmember Traeger votes aye. Valone. Councilmember Valone votes aye on all. Yeager. Aye. Councilmember Yeager votes aye. Matteo. Thank you. I vote no one 455, no one 2006, and I and the rest. 455. Combo. I'm voting aye on all, but I want to say with the Elevate Transit zoning for accessibility, I'm in support of it, but I am disappointed that the text amendment for the art inclusion in the Elevate Transit was eliminated because I understand some members saw it as either selecting accessibility or having the arts. And the arts are so often forced into a place of making a decision. Either we have accessibility or we have the arts. Either the students take math class or they can't have the arts. And it's always this dynamic where we are excluding the arts from everyday life. And the arts are essentially um, the backbone of New York City and they are what identifies New York City and makes it the place that it is today. And people come from all over the world to see our culture, our art, our history. And it also gives artists an opportunity to um, create, also to get paid. Um, and to be able to afford to continue to live in New York City. So I hope we move forward in the next council that does not continue to see the arts as an either or, but also an and and a two. They should be included in the fiber of every single thing we do. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. 
with the exception of intro 455A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2006A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. We'll now go into, at this time, the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will move into general discussion. We have Council Members Lewis, Adams, Kalos, Barron, and Yeager. And Council Member Miller. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader Kumbo. I would like to thank all of you here today for the outstanding levels of compassion, understanding, and support for the people of Haiti as they suffer through all forms of natural and unnatural catastrophes. I would personally like to thank Madam Majority Leader Kumbo, um, Council Member Brooks Powers, who made calls and during stated meeting made remarks while I was not able to attend the last stated as I traveled to the southern border to assess the migrant crisis and support families with many young children and some unaccompanied minors in Texas. I also wanna recognize the BLAC for using their platform to express our collective outrage towards the treatment of migrants and demanding accountability. We are on the verge of another calamity as tens of thousands more migrants move through Central America towards our borders in search of safety and opportunity. We cannot ignore the consequences stemming from years of racism, economic oppression, and unjust immigration policies. We must, as a nation, agree that deporting thousands of men, women, and children to a nation that is politically unstable, ravaged by gangs, and gender violence and overwhelmed by COVID-19 is definitely immoral. The images and mistreatment that we've all seen in the media and on social media, the outgoing, the ongoing racism that persists within our nation is terrible. This is not an issue about Haitians or with Haitians. This is a black people problem. Seeking refuge and fair human treatment. Our nation would not be where it is today without the sacrifices of Haitians. Haitians are black. The first Black Lives Matter movement. We should not repay our debt of gratitude with deportation, but compassion for the injustices that we have watched and failed to act on. October is a month for remembrance awareness, but also action to make our city safer, fight for birth equity, and, and to echo our message of solidarity that all genders are welcome here, all people are welcome here, all black people are welcome here. We wear ribbons of light pink, purple, light blue, and baby blue as a symbol of support to encourage survivors of gender-based violence, breast cancer, and families who have experienced infant and pregnancy loss. In addition, I would be remiss if I didn't say this month, the LGBT community looks back on their own troubled history within our community and our city, which is the site of the Stonewall riots 52 years ago, which ignited the gay rights movement. We must continue to utilize our platforms to support marginalized communities. That includes black people, and we need all people to support black people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Lewis, and thank you so much for seeing the horrific images in Texas and getting on a plane to fly to the belly of the beast of such horrific conditions to help the people there. Thank you so much. Council Member Adams, followed by Council Member Kalos. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Last week, the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, co-chaired by Council Member Idanik Miller and myself, announced the acquisition of $10 million for the Education Equity Action Plan in partnership with the Coalition of Black Educators and Advocates. 
As a child growing up in Southeast Queens, I didn't learn about the history, the contributions, the impact, or the legacy of African civilizations. More broadly, peoples of the African diaspora transported not just to America, but to various countries in the world. It wasn't until, Madam Majority Leader, that I, like you, was a student at Spelman College, a historically black, all women's college, that I gained a deeper education of the rich history of African civilizations and the impact of Africans and Afro peoples across the world. Fast forward to today, when students still don't have the opportunity to see themselves reflected in the textbooks they read and the curriculum they're taught in school. It's been said of late by one of our coalition educators, why did I have to go to the movies to learn that a black woman was instrumental in putting a man on the moon? This should be in our textbooks. The tragedy of Black Wall Street should be in our textbooks and so much more. When the BLAC heard the presentation from the coalition regarding the development of a K through 12 black studies curriculum to implement in New York City, we knew that we had to champion this, this initiative. And I'm very proud to say that we secured the funding not just to develop a uniform black studies curriculum, but to also implement a professional development program where teachers are equipped to teach the curriculum in our classrooms. This is an initiative that's long overdue, but I'm so glad that this council will make it happen. We're not just bringing history to our children, we are making history with this curriculum. So thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Jason Goldman. Thank you, finance guru, Regina Pareto Ryan. And thank you, city council colleagues. Thank you, BLAC members, for supporting this historic plan for the children of the city of New York. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. I'm so glad we got this done together. You and uh, Councilmember Miller were key, and I'm really proud of the council. It's a historic thing that we were able to do. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you, and congratulations, Councilmember Kalos. Half a million New Yorkers still have no internet in their homes. Two of the worst neighborhoods for internet connectivity are Borough Park, Brooklyn, and Community Board 12, and here in Manhattan, in East Harlem, where one quarter of households have no internet. A recent study published by the Centers for Disease Control found that, quote, COVID-19 vaccination was significantly associated with household internet access in New York City at the zip code level. Every New Yorker and every New York City apartment comes with heat, hot water, electricity, and a phone line. It's time to add internet so it's there and just works when a tenant moves in. We can finally end the digital divide and bridge the homework gap by making sure every apartment in New York City comes with internet. You can't get a vaccine if you can't get online to schedule or even find an appointment. And this pandemic has shown internet is a necessity. Under introduction 2418, all new construction in New York City would have to be wired for internet with all existing uh, municipal, uh, municipal dwellings with 10 or more units required to provide free broadband internet to tenants within three years. This legislation is supported by the authors of the CDC study, countless uh, technology leaders, and I hope it will be supported by you too. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Barron, followed by Councilmember Yeager, then Miller. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first of all, I want to announce that today is my husband's birthday, so we're extending birthday greetings, Charles Barron, Assemblymember Charles Barron. And I concur with the comments, of the remarks of my colleague, Councilmember Lewis, and support what it is that she has said and we need to make sure that um, we take action and make a stand. But I'm particularly standing here today because you know this body through the BLAC has called for the removal of that statue. And I know the speaker and his staff is working, are working on getting it removed. But I just wanna give people a little background information about one of the reasons why it should be removed. 
Councilmember Miller said that a student came to the chambers on a trip here, uh, came to the chambers on one of his school trips and looked up and said, is that a statue of Thomas Jefferson? He was shocked that the person was being honored with this position in the New York City Council of having his statue here. So in January 1st, 1794, uh, this is first, the first uh, level information, primary source rather, Jefferson calls Negroes inferior, quote, comparing them, Negroes, by their faculties of memory, reason, and imagination, it appears to me that in memory they are equal to the whites, in reason much inferior, as I think one would scarcely found to be capable of tracing and comprehending the in investigations of Euclid, I guess he never saw the pyramids, and that in imagination they are dull and could not produce anything. Religion indeed has produced a Phyllis Wheatley, but it could not produce a poet. The compositions published under her name are below the dignity of criticism. I advance it therefore as a suspicion only that the blacks whether originally a distinct race or made distinct by time and circumstances are inferior to the whites in the endowments of both body and mind. So that's just a tidbit of part of the reason why that statue needs to be removed from this body's chambers. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. I rise today uh, because I'm introducing a bill uh, with the support of almost 30% of this council, and it would reform a portion of how we do our budget. Today, as things stand, and for the last 30 years it's been the same, the Campaign Finance Board prepares its budget, sends it over to the mayor, the mayor inserts it into the executive budget, sends it over to us, and it gets, uh, it gets adopted by us. We, um, don't have the opportunity to change the budget. We don't have an opportunity to hold a hearing on the preliminary budget. We don't have an opportunity to ask the, count, the campaign finance board why it is that they need the money that they say they do. Now, this is not about the election financing, which is a different conversation, and we could have that at a different time, about the 110 or so million dollars that the campaign finance board has already spent this year on campaigns so that candidates can send out glossy flyers to New Yorkers. This is about the Campaign Finance Board's actual operating budget, the money they spend on staff, on rent, on an industrial potato peeler, if that's what they choose, with zero oversight by the mayor or by us. My bill would require the Campaign Finance Board to send its budget over one month earlier, instead of March and February, and would allow us to have hearings on it, as we do with every single other agency in the city. Why are they special? Who says they're special other than them? So it's a good government bill, it's a transparency bill, and it's something that we should do right now before the end of the year so that when the new council and the new mayor come in in January, the Campaign Finance Board knows that it has until February 10th to send us a budget so that we can take a look at how they're spending the city's money. Thank you very much. Oh, introduction, 2429. I really hope that uh, folks sign on to this. It's actually something that we can do and be proud of doing together and getting it done by the end of the year. Thank you. Councilmember Miller, followed by Holden and then Eugene. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I wanted to use this time to actually talk about the atrocities on the, uh, at the Texas border and the crises and the atrocities uh, of the Haitian immigrants, but my colleague so appropriately articulated those atrocities and her experience there. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the education and equity victory, and my colleague spoke so eloquently about that. Then I wanted to look, as I looked up and was reminded about Mr. Jefferson in these halls and how he did not deserve to be here, but once again, my colleague so eloquently articulated that. Mm -mm. Then I thought as a chair of civil service and labor that I had a responsibility to respond to the New York Times article that talked about 
the racism that continues to exist within the fire department and that we have failed to address that and that there are some bills that have languished in this council that have yet to be heard that would govern and, and address that. And so uh, I hope that those bills, will, will we can get those to the floor in, in the very near future. So that left me simply to say, um, as we come to a close of, of, of Hispanic Heritage Month, that I want to just take a moment to honor the contributions of more than 60 million Americans that highlight and, and highlight the issues and the diversity um, of our community. While we have made tremendous strides over the past years, Latinx appointments to the cabinet in Washington, D.C., but Latinos here uh, happen to be the, the, the fastest growing nationally ethnically group uh, economically in terms of home ownership for the past six years, not just last year, but the past six years continue to grow. Yet, locally, we have struggled to elevate Latinos into positions of influence and authority and have disproportionately been impacted by COVID-19 uh, and so many other things. Um, and there's a lot of work to do here. But I would like to say that we are very proud as, as a body here. We should all be proud, and particularly the BLAC, in ensuring that our story gets told. The budgets for uh, Center for Puerto Rican Studies, Dominican Studies, Mexican Studies have been gutted. We, this budget reflects that we did put that back and that our story is being told. So I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the members of the caucus. I want to thank this body for supporting such a, a, a budget that allows us to tell our story. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Holden and Council Member Eugene, and we will conclude with Council Member uh, Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to briefly talk about two bills I'm introducing today. One will prohibit triple tours of duty by our Department of Correction officers. And having, having uh, visited Rikers recently, um, it's difficult to even stay there for a few hours, much less 24 hours. So uh, I, I would uh, ask my colleagues to support this bill. That's intro 2416. And the second bill, which is, uh, I, I think, um, it's a no-brainer. If you think about uh, what's going on in the city of New York now, um, this bill, 2417, will, will prohibit the sale or distribution of materials that obscure license plates. Right now, you can order um, online uh, these, uh, again, there's a number of devices. Some have a curtain that comes down under, uh, over the license plate. I've seen that um, by someone driving in the wrong direction at a, at a great rate of speed. And I did speak to Amazon about this because uh, Amazon, you could buy this on Amazon, unfortunately, but you can't buy mace and send it to the city of New York, but you can buy license plates, uh, things, things that obscure license plates or distort the image. So that's, again, intro 2417. I would love that my colleagues sign on to this, and, and it gets um, in, into law by the end of this year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we now have Council Member Matthew Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Thank you. I just want to take the opportunity to thank the speaker, Speaker Johnson, and also uh, the BLA caucus for your effort for providing uh, funding for the black study curriculum. This is very, very important. And I honestly, I want to thank you for that, and I want to thank you on behalf of all black people and all Americans, because it is very important that people know that everybody contribute to the greatness of United States of America. Black people and people from all colors, from all countries. We have to tell the story of the people, especially the black young people that got to know where they come from, the struggle that the black people went through, and also the contribution of the black people to this United States of America. And I want to take the opportunity also to thank Farah. Thank you very much for your wonderful words. With respect to the Haitian people, the picture that we saw in the newspaper, the TV, they were horrible. And that sent a very wrong message about America, what America should be and what America is about. People from all over the world, every time they come to the United States seeking freedom, a better life for themselves and their, their, their children, their families, people from all over the world, 
And this is the idea of America. This is what America is about, a land of hope and opportunities, of freedom. But the way the Haitian people were treated at the border was horrible, unacceptable. But let me remind you that this is not what Haitian is about. That cannot define Haitian. We are the people who used to go everywhere in the world to train other people who are seeking freedom and liberty. We fought at the Savannah, Georgia for United States independence. We helped Simon Bolivar and Miranda liberate the South America. The accomplishment of the Haitian people is huge, it's powerful. I'm going to, tell you to conclude by saying that if Louisiana is part, is part of the United States of America today, it is because of the revolution of Haitian. And Haitian people come to Savannah, Georgia to fight for the independence of the United States. If you go to Louisiana, you're going to see the monument to pay tribute to Haitian people. I want to conclude, I don't want to talk too much, but I want to take the opportunity to invite you to the conaming of Flatbush Avenue as Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable Boulevard. Because Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable is known as the father of Chicago. He's the one who settled first in Chicago and created Chicago according to the historian. I'm saying that not only response of the event, but that was planned two years ago. You are invited to join the Haitian community, the elected officials from the city, state, and federal government, and leaders from all other communities to celebrate the contribution of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable to the United States. Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable represents not only Haitian, immigrant people. What the That's immigrant right. people do when they come to the United States, they contribute, they make America great. Thank you so very much. Thank you so this, much. this, please join us October 24th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member Gredenchik will close us out. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, Mr. Speaker. I, I wasn't going to speak today, but I, I didn't want to let it pass. Uh, I was inspired by the words of Council Member Farrell Lewis and just now by uh, Council Member Eugene. And I want the members of this council who are Haitian of descent, who are African descent, to know that you and other New Yorkers are not alone. I stand here a survivor. My entire family outside of England and the United States was murdered in the Holocaust. We say never again, and we don't mean that just for Jewish people. We mean that for every single human being created in God's image. So for those who are struggling, whether they're Haitian or wherever they may come from, this city, this city council, above all, above every single city in the world, has to be a home plate of freedom. And we have to remember that woman in the harbor, a gift of the people of France to the people of New York, whose words inspire me each and every day. So please know that you're not alone, not here in this council, or wherever you may be in New York City, or wherever you may be in the United States or the world. The New York City Council stands with you this council member does, and I am sure that all my colleagues do. Thank you for the time today, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Council Member Gredenchek, for your very powerful and inclusive words at this time. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. The stated meeting of October 7th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>